Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're finally going to bring the Hardpoint Engineering series to a close with the last episode detailing all of the experimental effects for railguns and plasma accelerators. You've waited long enough so let's get to it. Let's start with Dazzle Shell. This plasma accelerator exclusive experimental effect causes your target sensors to be disrupted slightly when struck. More specifically, their sensor range and thermal detection abilities are weakened for a brief duration. These effects are not felt by NPCs, making this mainly a PvP experimental. Also, the effects are almost indiscernible to your target if you are the only ship in the instance. However, should you be in a wing, it could disrupt their targeting of other ships, depending on their sensor range and the other ship's heat and distance. This is not a very popular choice on its own, but paired with other effects across multiple PAs, it can be quite helpful. Dispersal Field is another Plasma Accelerator exclusive in this category. This is a great effect to bring along, especially when you're in a wing. Any ship struck by dispersal field rounds will have their gimbaled and turreted targeting abilities disrupted. These hardpoints will act as if all targetable ships have simultaneously deployed chaff for around 5 seconds. There is a brief immunity cooldown, so consecutive strikes will not reset the duration of the effect. But with proper application, this experimental can eliminate the need for a chaff launcher allowing you to equip other utilities, increasing the defensive properties of your build. This one is tricky, and I chalk it up to personal preference. Another Plasma Accelerator exclusive in this category, Phasing Sequence reduces your damage output by 10%, but when striking shields, around 12% of that remaining damage bleeds directly through the shields and deals damage to the hull. The damage that bleeds through is the damage applied to shields after resistances from shields and falloff are applied. However, this damage ignores hull resistances. Once shields are down, however, you are then stuck with the 10% damage reduction. Some people claim it's worth it and some do not. Target Lock Breaker can be a powerful effect for PvP and is exclusive to PAs entirely. While it doesn't affect NPCs, it can hinder precise module targeting against commander enemies. When striking a player's ship, be it shield or hull, this effect simply causes them to drop targeting. While in a 1v1 fight, this effect can be useful to slow down module targeting, as breaking a lock resets their sub-target selection. However, the victim can simply use the Select Highest Threat binding to reacquire targeting on you, yet still forces them to reacquire any sub-targets they were aiming for. This effect really shines brightly in wing fights, when the Select Highest Threat option might not be the ship they were originally looking for. Breaking a lock also means that turrets set to Target Only mode will begin to reset to forward-facing orientation until another target is then acquired, potentially slowing down their DPS potential there. It also disrupts Seeker Missile and Torpedo lock-on, so with proper rate of fire and precision, this effect can render Seekers and Torps completely unusable. Thermal Conduit is a high-risk, high-reward mod, and is only available to PAs in this category. Thermal Conduit applies no change to your DPS until your ship reaches 100% heat level or above. When above 100%, you gain roughly 10% additional damage output. If your temperature can reach above 180%, you gain an even higher damage boost, all while your modules cry and melt around you. While it has no negative drawbacks, it can be detrimental when attempting to achieve maximum potential from this effect. Double Braced is quite simple and merely adds a small percentage increase to integrity. The percent that is increased is based on the actual integrity after modifications are applied, so you'll get more mileage applying this on top of the sturdy mod and less results when applied to a lightweight mod. This is a good choice for hull tanks and ships that overheat frequently to allow maximum module survivability. Flow Control is another basic mod that has basic changes, simply lowering power draw with no other drawbacks. 
To be clear, this does not lower distributor draw. Only the megajoule requirements from the power plant are affected. This is a good choice for power-hungry hardpoints and modifications. A basic and simple to comprehend experimental effect, oversize adds a slight damage boost and brings more power draw with it. These changes are factored after modification changes have already taken effect, so you'll get even more damage or power draw on mods that have already increased those stats. If you've been following my hardpoint series, you'll recall that I try to remain unbiased with the information I provide, save for multi-servos. Well, here we go again. The power draw and DPS increase are nearly identical to the changes received from the oversized experimental. The problem with multi-servos is how it uses an increased fire rate to achieve this damage increase, but with increased fire rate comes increased distributor draw and more ammo consumption. So I'll say again, oversized is going to be the better choice between the two, and I recommend not bothering with multi-servos. Next up is stripped down. This is the inverse of double braced. It removes a percentage of mass, and you will have more mass removed from heavier modules, and less so from lighter and smaller modules. This also applies after modification changes, meaning better mileage on sturdy modules and a smaller benefit to the lightweighted module. Stripped down is a staple of explorers all across the verse. The lower the mass, the higher the jump range. Every little bit helps. Now we come to Plasma Slug. This experimental is available for both plasma accelerators and railguns. Plasma Slug reduces the thermal load by 40%, but only when applied to railguns. It does not affect thermal load when applied to plasma accelerators, interestingly. Plasma Slug is one of the most unique effects that you can find, and can require some planning ahead to utilize effectively. Plasma Slug reduces your damage by 10%, but completely removes the ammunition reserves. Instead, once each magazine is depleted, it pulls a small portion of fuel to reload into the next magazine, potentially increasing your ammo reserves tremendously. There is no limit to the amount of times fuel can be depleted to restock, so keep your eye on your fuel reserves. The larger your fuel tank capacity, the longer you can fire before refueling. Given the nature of the fuel consumption rate, it's not often recommended for smaller ships with smaller tanks, as you may not even get more shots than ammo reserves would allow without this effect, if your tank is too small. One of the two railgun exclusive effects, Super Penetrator, is also very unique. It adds a 40% reduction to thermal load, but increases reload time by 50%. This is hardly noticeable, given the extremely fast reload speed, but can get out of sync with other railguns that don't also have Super Penetrator applied. But to understand the purpose of Super Penetrator, we need to understand penetration depth. Penetration depth is a specific value assigned to each hardpoint that dictates just how much hull the weapon can penetrate before ceasing to travel any further. This value is what decides if a target's hull is damaged or if an internal module takes damage instead. Lasers, for example, have a low penetration depth, meaning you are very unlikely to deal consistent damage to an internal module that's located on the upper half of a ship when striking the bottom. Railguns, however, have the highest penetration depth of all hardpoints, which is quite nearly 100%. This means that you could possibly deal damage to a ship's thrusters when firing and striking the nose of that target. However, for this to occur, the line of fire would have to not strike any other internal modules along the way to the thrusters. If it does, damage would stop at that module and be dealt to it instead. So here's where Super Penetrator comes in. With Super Penetrator applied, the damage doesn't stop when striking an internal module and can instead continue to pass through and strike multiple modules, with the line of destruction stopping only by reaching the opposite end of the ship it's penetrating. The majority of damage will be dealt to the first module struck, with substantially less damage dealt to consecutive modules. This effect will not allow the projectile to continue beyond the struck ship, however, so it is not able to strike multiple ships with a single shot. 
And now, for the effect you likely came for, Feedback Cascade is the only other Railgun exclusive mod not found on any other type of hardpoint in Elite, and can often be confused for Reverberating Cascade, as they both relate to shielding. Feedback Cascade lowers damage by 20%, but also thermal load by 40%. With these changes, comes a countering ability to enemies that deploy shield cell banks. When striking a target that has a shield cell bank in progress as indicated by the visible fluctuations in their shield, the total amount of megajoules regenerated by that bank is reduced. While the amount reduced depends on the size of the shield cell bank and the damage dealt, you are only able to prevent up to 90% of that cell bank regeneration value. For the largest shield cell bank possible, you will need up to three shots to cancel a class 8 bank from a medium railgun, or up to five if using the class 1 railguns. And with that, we bring the Hardpoint Engineering series to a close. Thank you so much for all of your support and patience throughout this series. My hope is that someone somewhere found education and value in some segment of this series, and that others will do the same as time goes on. I would like to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you that made my journey successful, attempting to educate and entertain commanders from all corners of the galaxy. I would not be where I am today if not for the love and support from my viewers and subscribers. Your comments have been more uplifting than I could have ever fathomed. And to my beloved squadron, all the members of Ashling's Angels, too many to list, I cannot thank you enough for your friendship and support. So, for the last time, thank you all once again for tuning in. There will likely be more engineering videos to come in the future. But until then, keep tinkering, Commanders.